you bring me to another point here is uh, Part F is dealing as prescribed in these regulations with breaches of discipline by or against members of staff and students of the institution, which you just eloquently actually pointed out that, you know what, you set the standard. And if it's not being followed, if there's any kind of breach, you need to let the folks know there was a breach. Right. right away. You can't sit there and wait for no. it to happen. Don't let it fester. Don't let anything fester. If you have a problem with a teacher, call the teacher in. Say, look, I got this problem. Now how are we going to solve the problem? Work on solving the problem. Don't go sussing to another teacher or anything like that. Deal with the problem. And oh. let the person know where they are. I always keep a paper trail. With everything. Mm -hmm. All right. G, dealing with prescribing these regulations with the appointment, termination of appointment, promotion, demotion, suspension from duty, and other personal matter in relations to members of the staff. That's another board function. It's always unpleasant, I think, from personal experience when it comes to dealing with termination, demotion, suspension. How can they avoid that, sir? Because these things can be avoided. These are some serious things that causes someone to actually lose a job. So this is some serious breaches. But from your personal experience, what advice can you actually give to the principals to avoid, let's say, a termination or a suspension? Well, you no? can't avoid a termination or a suspension um, or demotion or anything. Because these things are part of doing the job. Uh, it goes back to the point we made earlier that if a teacher is not doing what he or she is supposed, supposed to, to do. do, you're supposed to discuss it with them and then confirm your discussion in writing. So the teacher is aware about the position. And if after repeated efforts um, and, and the file is there, it is clear that you have made every effort to bring that teacher up to standard and the teacher just is not capable of coming up to standard. Well then, the procedures have to be put in place to do whatever has to be done. So it's and if it's being dealt with on a regular basis and in a construct, on a constructive basis, it won't be a problem because when the time comes, the teacher will probably resign because so that teacher will know because of the history. Paper trail. So it's for, the, for new principals to understand it is a part of the job and it's a breach of the responsibilities as well as the regulations. So therefore, they should not feel in any kind of way that, oh my God, you know, I'm ruining somebody's career. No. It, it, it's a part of the job. The truth of the matter is you're, you are helping a person when you point out to them what faults they have or what problems they have. You're assisting that person. You try and show them how to improve themselves. If at the end of that period of time you don't deal with it, then you're not living up to your responsibility as principal and you are doing the children harm. Because 90 out of 100 times, the children is the one, are the ones who are going to suffer if the teacher is not doing his or her job. Excellent. So it, it, it's a symbiotic relationship then because in turn it's taking care of the children. Of course. That's what it ultimately leads That's up to. That's what the whole purpose of a school is to develop children and to have them grow and improve and to prepare them for, for life, for further education, and ultimately to be good corporate, good citizens. Excellent. Now, moving forward with the board of responsibility, due to the responsibilities, says members of a board who are not normally present on the compound of the institution, they might administer shall visit the institution at least once a term. That seems kind of, at least once a term. How, how often would you say you, 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 you meet? Well, I think we, we discussed this earlier on, mm -hmm. where I indicated that um, as far as JC is concerned, we have a monthly board meeting, and I encourage that. And I encourage members of the board to try and come into the school as often as they can. I don't want them to come in and be a nuisance, um, but they have a responsibility to come in and just walk around and see how things are going and form opinions. And... Um, if you have them coming to monthly meetings, then they can do this at least once a, t once a, once a month, 12 times of the year. I don't think a person who comes into an institution for one hour every three times of the year really can get a gauge of what's get going a on. gauge of what's happening. Now, that person may have a different responsibility. That person may be chairman of the finance committee and is just dealing with the numbers and so on, and so therefore serving their purpose. But um, as chairman, 
and I don't get into ruins here by any means. Um, but I'm in and out of JC. We actually, I actually have an office there because we have a foundation office, and the old past students also have an office there. So there's hardly a day I don't have a reason to go into the foundation office. But as far as um, Mr. Reed is concerned, you know, he knows that I'm available if he needs me for anything, and if there's anything of concern to me, I speak to him about it. But as I said, you do this with respect and with a spirit of teamwork, mm -hmm. and so it's not a problem. Lastly, uh, just to understand the different different functions or committees of the board itself, you spoke about a finance committee. Mm -hmm. um, the finance and audit committee. Finance and audit committee. It has to ensure that the audits are done as well. Yeah. I take it you have a human resource? I have a personnel committee which deals with these problems when you have problems with children or with um, teachers. All right. I mean, that doesn't mean that this... The, the principal won't have his own disciplinary committee. Mm -hmm. But the, the story is I mean, it's only when um, he thinks that some serious action needs to be taken and something he can't deal with at his level that he would refer it to the personnel committee. Okay. And what, what other committees does the board well, consist of? The personnel of? committee and the finance committee are the two substantial committees uh, mm -hmm. of the board. Okay. So really and truly then, when things are not being able to handle by the principal that might be not necessarily their responsibility. That's when things actually go to the board then. Yeah. Like if a child is in gross misconduct of the rules, that's when they will actually come to the board with the paper trail of what, what the, the, the offenses that this that's child has actually done. The same thing with a, a teacher per se. Correct. But so far, so, so for the most part then, the board is just there, like you said, to manage and make sure that the institutions run properly. smoothly and properly and according to code. And like any other business, um, the management has its responsibility. And if a child, uh, and they have your detention systems and all the various things, if a child has behaved badly, there are certain punishments that are meted out to the child. It is only when it gets to the point that uh, you say, no, we've tried everything with this child and we think the we child should be expelled. Literally, it has it almost has to be at that point before you refer it to the personnel committee. And the same thing will apply with teachers or ancillary staff. The management of the school must deal with the day-to-day -day management things and not just keep throwing everything at the board <laughs> and trying to pass the ball. They must manage the school. Okay. And use the board when they really need the board. Absolutely. Anything that I might have not... I mean, we pretty much went over the edu education regulation codes here, but anything that I might have missed or any closing remarks that you can give to the newly appointed principals? In today's environment, most schools do not have adequate resources um, to do the things that will really make the difference in the school. Make the impact that they want. And, and precise. I think it is very important that the principal well, actually sets up a further committee or has certain members of the board that really assist him in fundraising activities. And that he should develop relationships with the Parent Teachers Association to develop fundraising activities. We, we cannot ignore the fact that the funds that are provided by the ministry are not enough to do all the things I need. When I think of the sporting, how important sporting activities Absolutely. for the development of youngsters. When I think of the welfare needs of a school, you, you don't get any money from the ministry to do those things. It is therefore critical that the principal realizes that he has that further responsibility to try and develop additional resources. But when a child doesn't have lunch, yeah. you know, you have to be able to find some resources to make sure that child has lunch. Or the child is going to drop asleep or you wonder why the child gives trouble and so on. So you've got to provide some additional resources. And it means that the principal cannot ignore them and just simply say, well, the ministry don't give me any money, I don't have any money. He has got to work with his board. And the way it's part of the board's responsibility to develop additional resources to ensure that the additional things needed in a school can be provided. Excellent. All right.
Thank you very much for coming by today to Pleasure. give us an insight. Pleasure. I'd like to lean on you in the future if we need to. I guess we can. Thank you very much.